You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. One of the jobs I've been doing recently is to try to fix up the Pod Bible recordings of Luke's Gospel, removing the background hum and the like. And to do that I've been listening to the Gospel, chapter by chapter. And I've been struck once again by just how difficult the Gospel is for those of us who live in the rich, comfortable West. Take, for example, Luke chapter 16, that story of the dishonest manager, or whatever you call it. From Luke chapter 16, Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man once had a manager to take care of his business, but he was told that his manager was wasting money. So the rich man called him in and said, What is this I hear about you? Tell me what you have done. You are no longer going to work for me. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now that my master is going to fire me? I can't dig ditches, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do, so that people will welcome me into their homes after I've lost my job. Then one by one he called in the people who were in debt to his master. He asked the first one, How much do you owe my master? A hundred barrels of olive oil, the man answered. So the manager said, Take your bill and sit down and quickly write fifty. The manager asked someone else who was in debt to his master, How much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, the man replied. The manager said, Take your bill and write eight hundred. The master praised his dishonest manager for looking out for himself so well. That's how it is. The people of this world look out for themselves better than the people who belong to the light. My disciples, I tell you to use wicked wealth to make friends for yourselves. Then when it is gone, you will be welcomed into an eternal home. It's so easy for Western scholars to be puzzled by this story. Jesus seems to be advocating dishonesty. How come it's this guy who defrauds his master who gets acclaimed as wise? What's going on here? The problem is that we don't read this story the way Jesus told it. You see, Jesus was a Galilean carpenter's son. The way he told the story, it was obvious that the manager had done a sensible move. He'd restored relationships, he'd built up community, and he'd increased both his own reputation and that of his master. And all his master had lost was some money, which he didn't need anyway. He couldn't have loaned all that stuff to people if he didn't have more than he needed. It was the master who was in the wrong for storing up goods that other people could use looked at from the perspective of a Galilean carpenter's son, or the perspective of an African villager. This story is simple and straightforward. The manager is sensible and acts rightly. The master has acted wrongly, until at the end he recognizes that his manager has been more sensible and more right than he has, and commends him for it. Just to make sure we get the point, Jesus concludes, My disciples, I tell you, to use wicked wealth to make friends for yourselves. Then when it's gone, you will be welcomed to an eternal home. It's as simple as that. Got too much money? Give it away. And too much simply means more than you need to spend today, tomorrow, and the next day, or whatever. More than your immediate needs. No saving up for retirement and all that. Let the community look after that. As in village Galilee or village Africa today, the community will. Anyone who can be trusted in little matters can also be trusted in important matters. But anyone who will be dishonest in little matters will be dishonest in important matters. Sensible enough, Jesus. But he goes on. If you cannot be trusted with this wicked wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? Oh, And can we be trusted with wicked wealth? We who live in the comfortable West, who save for our retirements, pay our insurance, and worry about tomorrow. 